Endeavors. And I'm Jim Carney, and this is EdCast, a program created and produced by educators for everyone interested in education. The community college is making news these days. President Obama has called for increased funding to these schools and says they are instrumental in maintaining the country's economic edge. The role of the community college has changed from the early 1900s to today. We'll speak with Ostos Community College President Felix Matos Rodriguez about what it means to be educated in the 21st century and why the community college may be just what today's students need. Today, it is my special pleasure to welcome to EdCast, my president, the president of Ostos Community College, Dr. Felix Matos Rodriguez. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Let me congratulate you. You are about to come up on finishing your first academic year as president of Ostos. And you have such a varied background. You're a social scientist, historian, professor. You were uh, the secretary of the Department of the Family in Puerto Rico. What attracted you to the position of becoming a community college president? Oh, I, I think it's, it's a commitment to the population that um, Ostos in particular, but community colleges serve. Um, after serving four years uh, in a government position in, in Puerto Rico, <coughs> I think I was ready just to go back to a faculty position. I didn't want to administer anything. Uh, but the opportunity, in the case of Ostos, to work with a college that has a mission of access, a mission of success, uh, of working with first-generation college students, uh, with students that traditionally have been at the margins of uh, higher education, uh, was very, very appealing to me. And, and in my own family history, uh, an institution very similar to Ostos back in Puerto Rico, uh, uh, back then, the, the early origins of the University of Puerto Rico provided uh, the opportunity to my grandmother to become a teacher, uh, and that's what led to social mobility uh, in, in my family. So in, if I had, uh, if I've had tremendous opportunities in my life, uh, in part has been because at some point an institution opened the doors to a very talented woman, in that case my grandmother, uh, and then a lot of good things happened after that. So uh, the chance to be part of an institution that does that on a daily basis with the kind of students that you know very well uh, go to also and to other mm -hmm. community colleges was, um, was music to my ears. And it allowed me to combine the um, the academic side of, of, of my background uh, and maybe some of the social part of my work uh, in government in terms of the kinds of students that we serve. So uh, I am uh, happy that, that they decided to entrust the responsibility on me. It's been a phenomenal year. I'm very, very happy and uh, look forward to many more years of uh, collaborating with fa great faculty like you and great <laughs> students on campus. Uh, to uh, continue building a, a great institution. In what ways do you see the community college changing, evolving? Are we seeing different students? What are we seeing happening from, I guess, the early 1900s when community colleges first began to the present day? Well, I, I think that, that, that the one thing that you can always expect in the community colleges particularly change because okay. they tend to be the schools that are more in tune with changing demographics, with changes in the economy. Uh, so in that sense, I would imagine that variety tends to be the norm in many of the community college settings. Of course, the setting of the community college is also uh, very important. Uh, a community college like ours, based uh, in the Bronx in an urban environment, mm -hmm. is going to have a very different set of students, demographic profile, uh, academic offering, programming, than let's say a community college in a rural part <coughs> of even New York State or, or the U.S. So, but I think in the one thing that we're, cha we're seeing is changing in the population, mm -hmm. changes in the labor market patterns too. So it's not just who's coming, right. uh, but uh, what are they facing once they leave the, uh, the institution? Different kinds of expectations in terms of um, the quality of instruction, the use of technology. So I think one of the really dynamic aspects of being a community college setting is that sense of change and and uh, dynamism which um, uh, you know I think you can feel feel the energy and the other good change is that I think finally at some level uh, recognition of the value and the work that those places have been doing for decades. Now why are students coming to the community college today and what what is it that they're facing that might be different from 30 years ago? In some places it is a very convenient place um, that offers high quality education at a very affordable price and those yeah. three things are you know are key in in the 
dinner conversations that many families are having uh, in terms of the future of their, uh, of their children or of the parents who might be going back to school, who might be retooling because they, they want to um, take a different career path. If they've become uh, unemployed, unfortunately, they need to think about what the future is going to bring. Uh, so I think that you have location, you have quality in terms of the instruction mm -hmm. and the services that are mm -hmm. being provided. You have a very affordable uh, price. And, and then you have sort of this, uh, I think, unique setting in which different educational and career pathways are set up in a single institution where you can go for um, a career mm -hmm. that uh, gets you an associate and, and, uh, and it can be something very definite like dental hygiene, mm -hmm. which you might not require to do uh, any other schooling right. prior to that. Uh, or you go in and you do something and you're really aiming to go for a four-year degree and continue your education. You might go for a certificate. That kind of flexibility, I think, at a time of uncertain um, economic times, mm -hmm. uh, I think is one of the key attractions to the community colleges. In the case of the CUNY yeah. community college, I think that you have another thing which is really key, that is that you have first-rate faculty. And I think it's one of the things mm -hmm. that makes us very different from community colleges across the country. The, the, same quality, the same quality of our faculty is the one that you find all throughout uh, the, CUNY, the CUNY system, you might find uh, individuals who are more interested in the, in the teaching part of the mission, but the quality, the credentials, everything right. is, is uniform. And that gives us a, a leg up over some other, other community uh, college systems in, in the country. It is very unique in that way in that the requirements for faculty rank are the same at the community college and the senior college. You mentioned um, the fact that the community colleges offer students a variety of paths. You also mentioned the competitive advantage. Of course, there are many people now who are choosing to take two years of community college before they transfer just mm -hmm. to save tuition money. So there, there really is a recognition of the, of the economic value. and the value. <laughs> President Obama recently made a point of singling out the community college. And he made a point of saying that they should be the sites of job training, so to keep the United States, to keep its economic advantage. In what ways do you see OSOS and the CUNY Community Colleges fulfilling that? Oh, we, we, I think that we are sort of uniquely positioned to, to do some of that. First, we have a number of important niches, which I think are very important <clears throat> within the economy of the Bronx and of New York City. Some of them are in the health profession, yeah. which, which had really phenomenal um, so success nursing. in dental hygiene mm -hmm. and nursing, in uh, uh, radiation uh, technology, uh, the, the folks that uh, you know deal with the X-ray. I see them, by the way, when I, when I go for yep. X-rays. <laughs> and um, and we're opening also uh, some new lines in in health related, like gerontology, uh, community health, to keep expanding uh, because there's an area in which there continues to be uh, demand for for jobs. Um, we also have always had a niche in terms of language and language instruction, right. which is a key thing coming into a global economy in the 21st century. I mean, the, the fact that you can um, uh, write, speak, communicate in one, two, three more languages is an asset to uh, increasing global uh, citizens uh, in the world or right. global citizens in this global city that's New York City, right? So those are, I think, two things that also have done very, very well, and, and I hope that we can continue mm -hmm. to use in this uh, time of added attention to what the community colleges do. And the, the other set is we are in one of the poorest communities in New York City. And, and I think that that's where uh, the opportunity uh, and also the, the, the mission and the commitment to do the workforce development training component is really, really crucial because they are individuals that need to complete their GEDs so mm -hmm. it becomes the path to either a job or to go to college, they need to complete a certificate, they need to do some retooling, uh, and all of that, I think, that in, in a place um, that has such high unemployment as the South Bronx, uh, we need to play a key role in, in providing those options. And it's been one of the things that have kept me busy uh, in this, in this first year. Have you been kept busy? Oh, I am, <laughs> I am but, but delightfully busy. I mean, uh, talking to community-based organizations to see how we can partner, because in this tight, economic times, we don't want to duplicate. There's a lot of entities doing a lot of good work. What we need to do is go in, fill in the gaps, see what are the things in which uh, an institution like Ostos 
has an advantage, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then go partner and increase the number of people that we have on the, uh, on the educational pipelines. So it's one of the things that I've been uh, stressing and also, quite frankly, uh, positioning the institution so that uh, whenever this federal monies, you know, mm -hmm. money becomes available, when the federal funding, that we are ready uh, with the programs, with the partnerships, with the, you mm -hmm. know, with all the things to take full advantage of that and, you know, bring about uh, good change uh, to the people of the South Bronx and, and Northern Manhattan. Jim Carney had the opportunity to speak to some students about the community college experience. So let's take a look and see what okay. they said. Ostos Community College on the Grand Concourse in the South Bronx offers a variety of programs, including liberal arts, transfer to senior colleges, and professional programs. One such program in radiology prepares students to go directly into their field upon graduation. Why did you choose to come to Hostos Community College for radiology? Um, I was accepted in St. John's, but that was like 60000 uh for the whole two years. I said, forget it. Mm -hmm. So it's cheaper over here. Okay. Yeah. And you? Yeah, price did um, price was an option, and also because it's so convenient to uh, to my house. I walk from school. I walk from home to school, so it's easier for me to get here. And plus, I found out that the uh, allied health department here is one of the highest ranking out of CUNY. Well, we're fortunate enough to have two days at the clinicals, and I'm over at uh, Sloan Memorial Kettering, which is uh, one of the top hospitals in um, for cancer research, and it's a really good experience. Do you think that the, the program here at Hostess is preparing you for uh, going out into, quote, the real world? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm um, doing my clinicals in Lincoln Hospital right now. And especially in the ER, there are many cases coming in, many types of cases. So um, it's, it's fun um, dealing with uh, different types of people and uh, the amount of cases that come in. I'm, uh, I'm learning a lot over there. Another program designed to transition students into four-year senior colleges focuses on teaching English as a second language. Tell me, why did you come to Hostos Community College? Well, I came because I felt like, you know, I had to prepare myself to go to another college and, you know, that way I can just learn more the, the language. I came here to prepare myself for the future in order to become an educated person and to help my society and to be a better person in the future. Do you plan on going forward to a, a four-year college after this? Yeah, that's, that's why I'm here, because I've, I have a student visa, so I came here for to have a good education after two years and go to four years to have a bachelor and go back to my country, help my society. What profession do you see yourself going into after college? Uh, dental hygiene. <laughs> And do you think that the program here at Hostess is preparing you well for uh, going on to a four-year school? Yes, they are doing a great job here because if I compare the way I, when I started here and the way I'm speaking right now and I understand when I read, it's big, big difference. They're doing great, great, great job here. I want to be a doctor. Uh, the reason I want to be a doctor is because uh, I was in a medical school back to my country, so that's why I'm here trying to move forward and get what I want. Do you think that the program here at Hostess is helping you prepare for that college, the four-year college experience? It's worth the, it's helped me a lot. Uh, when I came to the United States, I couldn't express myself the way I'm doing right now. I came in and interact like, have a conversation with other people that I can understand it very well. And so it's very wealthy. Now, back to Linda and her guest in the studio. Well, you may have heard that there is some concern being raised that the community college emphasis on career and jobs may be diverting attention away from providing students with a solid liberal arts education. What do you say to that? Well, I, I think that, that <clears throat> first, in a place like Coastals, uh, and, and you may have been part of it, we have a, a phenomenal initiative for some of our faculty uh, grant from the NEH precisely to yes. discuss this issue about the role of the humanities and the liberal arts uh, in, uh, in the context of community college. I've been blessed to be able to participate in some of those discussions. So I think the fact that you have the faculty engaged uh, and when you see the enrollment in some of the courses, they, they continue to be robust. 
That's true. Um, and so I think that sometimes because of a shift of discourse, it might be that at the federal level there's increased interest on the career path uh, because of the tough economic times, I think that we should not underestimate um, the hunger that the students bring and the capacity of our faculty to instill passion and say, it might be that you came here thinking that all you were going to learn about is um, you know, dental hygiene. Okay? While I train you to do that, I want to open up this individual to new possibilities. And, uh, and it might be that the person graduates with that degree and maybe doesn't think about coming back to school two, three years later because her economic situation mm -hmm. doesn't allow it, but you planted the seed. So that makes it all the more important oh, yes. to put that there. I mean, I certainly oh, have yes. seen students in my classes in my children's literature elective who are from rad tech or dental hygiene, and the, and the way they really love that. So it's very interesting that you're saying that we give them, we should give them that as well. I, and and I, think, I think we do. Uh, I think they know it. But sometimes those seeds that we plant because of maybe the economic conditions, because you know maybe the family composition, you know, doesn't allow that student mm -hmm. a lot of flexibility. It might not really bloom mm -hmm. there, right. but uh, like, but you have like people that people. have lifelong learning in their system, and it might be that it comes back for them or their career. It's something that they instill in the next generation, and that's equally important. So I, you know, I'm very committed. I'm a historian. I know that. Uh, and you know, I tell anybody, um, I am a historian who's running an institution that has a budget of about $50 million, okay? What in my training prepared me for that? Obviously, being in academia, but the capacity <clears throat> to write, to speak, to communicate, to think critically, to analyze, those are skills that are no matter where you go, are needed. There are people who say that you should hire a liberal arts student for any number of jobs because they just have a kind of well-rounded background. It's very interesting pulling together. I want to ask you a question. Why do you think we're seeing more women enrolled in community colleges today than men. And that's nationwide. That's just, you know, well, I mean, that's I mean, that, that's a trend in higher ed in, 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 in general. It is. Uh, I think <clears throat> that um, in urban areas, you might, um, I mean, there might be part of the urban culture of, of you know, growing up a male uh, tends to sort of um, underappreciate education as something that is not cool, mm -hmm. as something that is done by you know folks that you consider to be geeks or nerds, uh, and it's tough to fight uh, some of those uh, some of those stereotypes. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that uh, you know women are smart, and women know that when they go to the labor force, uh, they don't get paid uh, as much money as men. Uh, that some of the entry level occupations for women. Uh, when you go in without getting an education, mm. are pay less and are much less desirable than the ones that men have opened to them. So I think women know those things, and it's an added incentive for them to go advance their education. So there's many, 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 many factors there. But uh, I mean, ultimately, what we want <coughs> is every individual, male or female, trying to achieve their full potential. You've been very, you've been very vocal about your concerns about the um, economy and its impact. What do you see as some of the dangers of New York State's economic predicament and the way it might affect community colleges? Well, I mean, I think <coughs> that clearly elected officials, pundit, foundation folks, uh, there is unanimous consensus about the importance of community colleges as key engines of economic growth, right? Uh, so it makes little sense at a time when you're desperately trying to find the answers to get the engine going back again, that you, uh, you know, you do, you, you, <clears throat> you have cuts uh, that would undermine the capacity of this institution to do <clears throat> the best job possible. So I think that we are going to need to prioritize. We're going to have to make difficult decisions, but there's consensus. This is an investment that pays off. This is an investment, one of the best investments that state can do. And I tell elected mm -hmm. officials, you know, at a time where your constituents are asking you, make intelligent investment. It's one of the best ones is CUNY overall, but particularly community colleges. And um, so this would be the wrong time oh, to take I mean, the money away, I, the absolute wrong time. I don't time. think there'd be a right time. There's never a ever, right time, right? but this is the worst but time. I think this would be and you know and you also have individuals coming to the schools precisely to be able to retool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, to face, to weather the crisis. So we're also going to be 
you know, limiting those opportunities at that time, I, I really makes, I think so it would it make makes a bad thing worse to take very, the money away. Very little sense. I know that President Obama has proposed some changes into the administration of the student loan. And you've really been very perceptive, I think, about some of the some of the controversy about that. Tell us a little bit about what you see as the benefits of what the president is proposing. Well, the, the president's bill, uh, which was approved in the House of Representatives and is now uh, under consideration in the Senate, uh, it's called SAFRA, mm -hmm. the Student uh, Aid and Financial Responsibility yes. Act. Student and um, student aid, yes, you got and it. it. And it combines <laughs> reforms to uh, the way students' loans are made, uh, and also, which says we have subsidized banks to give students loans for years. Mm -hmm. We don't really need to do this. We could be a direct form of lending. Right. The savings, let's pass them to invest in education. And they pass the savings, money for community colleges, money for historically black colleges, Hispanic serving institutions, tribal colleges, money to ensure higher graduation rates, all the things that we want in higher ed, passing those savings right. there. Um, investing in these things make perfect sense. The banks had their uh, opportunity. They got the subsidies. Made a good, lot of money. Good, good for them. Um, I uh, had my student loans. My wife. I don't. I haven't talked to many people that were very, very happy with either the customer service, the orientation. Uh, I'm done, a parent paying student loans, and my son is paying his done, as well. Done those things, so I don't think that the particularly customer friendly job mm -hmm. was being done there. So I think this makes a lot of sense. It. It. it you're. You, this is what you're asking government to do, to take a hard look at the programs that, they do, that they're running, to be more efficient, there's a way to be more efficient, and pass the savings to where you want to make an investment. So this is under consideration right now in the Senate. Uh, it's tied up also with the politics of uh, health uh, reform, mm -hmm. uh, but I encourage anybody listening to this broadcast who cares about community colleges, who care about education, okay, to contact uh, their senators to write and say, SAFRA is important, it's really, really an avant-garde legislation and we need to be supportive And the it. graduation in initiative that's a part of that would really be a particular value to community college students, yes? I mean, they really benefit. Or well, there'd, be, there'd be money for programs, there'd mm. be money for infrastructure, which we badly need. There'd be money also for technology investment, which is more and more part of the equation as we want to uh, you know, provide the, the best teaching with the best tools available to us and reach as many people as we possibly can. Uh, so I think it, it's really historic legislation and we need to support it. Seems like, you, how could you not, but hey, <laughs> how could you, someone will find a way to, well, the, the, to, the, to oppose the, it. The, the banks have a, a, a big lobby mm -hmm. and, yeah. and uh, they are... We only have very little time left, so I want to ask you one final question. To you as the president of a college, what does it mean to be an educated person in the 21st century? Oh, I, 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 just, I just think about it. It's about opportunities. It's about um, what those tools have given me the chance to you know, grow as a human being, uh, which makes me not only a better president, makes me a better husband, a better father of my kids, a better neighbor, uh, a good citizen, somebody who's curious, somebody who can learn, uh, somebody that can pass that on to other uh, generations. Uh, clearly, there's a correlation with education and quality of life. We, we, we all know that. Money is not everything in the world, but, you know, we do want, uh, you know, a nice house and, and nice things for us and for our family. So um, um, is that capacity to, to enjoy uh, my humanity to the fullest uh, that I think that an education uh, gives you. And that's why I'm in this business, because uh, I want to be able to pass on those opportunities, not just to my kids, but to everybody. I want to thank you so much for joining for us today. We're out of time already, but thank that you again. Yes, President Felix Matos Rodriguez of Osos Community College. Thank you for joining us. And please don't go away. We'll be right back with our Ed Bites. We'd like to hear from you. If you have any suggestions or comments, drop us an email at our email address. Welcome back to this edition of Ed Bites. High school students may rejoice when they hear about the latest New York State proposal to save money. Education Week reports that state officials are considering eliminating a number of Regents exams. Slated to go might be the exams in foreign languages, three of the exams in science, and two in math. Regents exams would no longer be given in global history, geography, or U.S. history and government. 
The plan raises a number of questions. How would this affect high school graduation standards? How can student performance be compared among schools and districts? Though some educators see this as a good opportunity to tweak assessments, others see a potential setback to setting high standards for students in New York State. Are you as confused as we are about what makes a school successful? Seems there are new recommendations every day. Now a new book identifies five ingredients that working together make for urban school success. Organizing schools for improvement, lessons from Chicago, lists these components as strong leadership, a welcoming attitude towards parents and forging community connections, teacher professional development and their belief in change, a safe nurturing climate for learning and strong instructional guidance. More disappointing news regarding Head Start. The $7 billion Head Start preschool program is not as effective as its advocates thought. A rigorous study found that after some initial preschool gains, the program had almost no impact on children's cognitive, social, emotional, or health outcomes at the end of the first grade compared to a control group. Nine out of ten federal social programs also revealed weak positive effects. Does this mean education programs are of no value? The problems they are meant to address have not disappeared, so researchers continue to seek ways to strengthen these interventions. Why do American students do poorly in math and science? One answer is simple. According to Jim Simons, the founder of Math for America, we don't have enough teachers of math and science who actually know math and science. The shortage, he believes, is the result of better opportunities for individuals who are skilled in math. They are able to get jobs that pay more and offer more respect than teaching. Math for America is meant to address this disparity by offering fellowships which will supplement salaries in exchange for a four-year commitment to teaching math. Well, that does it for this edition of EdCast. Until next time, class dismissed. EdCast is made possible in part by contributions from Lesh and Lesh, your Bronx attorneys.